I don't know why I've put these fairy lights up, but I feel like I'm more of a legitimate YouTuber now that I have. I've been a bit self-destructive this week. I've started about three different videos this week uh, and eventually got a bit down about them because they were pretty bad ideas. And so each time I've just ended up throwing the idea away. So yeah, I, I don't really know what I'm doing at the moment. But until then, I didn't want to upload nothing this week. So here's a video where I review all of the movies I've watched in 2020 so far. Obviously, that's a decent amount of movies, so I will be keeping my reviews concise. I'm also counting rewatches I'll put up on the screen if I'd already watched the film before, or whether it was a first time viewing. Uh, I'm going to rate them all out of, I guess, 10. So let's start ourselves off with... Shawshank Redemption, an all-time classic to start with. How can anyone not like Morgan Freeman? It definitely made me cry a few times. It's an emotional roller coaster, but but in in the best kind of way. Nine out of ten for Shawshank Redemption. Fargo. I'm not sure whether I like Fargo or not. I get that there's an appeal when it comes to directors like the Coen Brothers, where they sort of actively try and go against uh, the typical way you would set up a. a a movie's narrative but I don't know I, I guess I just feel like sometimes it comes across a bit forced like they're, they're they're trying a bit too hard so like in Fargo there's a lot of conversations that are dragged out purely for the sake of being dragged out I don't know it's not for me but fair enough if you like that kind of stuff a four out of ten for, for Fargo insomnia it was a bit uninteresting to be honest especially for a detective thriller there's not actually that much that happens there is one really good scene where the main character is chasing the villain across a load of floating logs in, in an Alaskan shipping yard. So that one scene does, does knock it up a little bit in my estimation. Three out of ten, I'm afraid. The Life of Brian. Life of Brian is very funny in a kind of old British comedy kind of way. I mean, it is Monty Python, so I suppose that's a bit obvious. The thing that I wasn't expecting is that the actual standard of filmmaking is is kind of bad. It's not very well shot. The sound is kind of dodgy. The editing's not great. I suppose that's not really the point of it, and it does get away with it just purely on the fact that it's so silly. It was still a very enjoyable watch. Six out of 10. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is an amazing film. The editing, as with all Edgar Wright stuff, is, is just so good. I, I would go as far as to say uh, maybe the best parody film ever. Nine out of 10. Being John Malkovich. This is a really weird one. My dad loves this film and, and don't get me wrong, it is kind of funny in places and it's a pretty clever concept, but I just don't like it that much. I think maybe it doesn't appeal to me personally because it just doesn't look very good. It's kind of dark and dingy for most of the film and it's supposed to be hard to watch in an unnerving and creepy way which I don't really care much for. Again, not my kind of film but I can see why people like it. I would give it a 3.5 out of 10. Django Unchained. The only Quentin Tarantino film I've actually liked so far was Kill Bill and unfortunately Django Unchained hasn't done anything to change that. It could just be me but I always feel like Quentin Tarantino films have a bit of a smugness about them and from the interviews I've seen of him I think he just thinks his films are a lot more clever than they actually are. I don't hate violence in movies, I don't hate references in movies, I don't hate swearing in movies and I don't hate over dramatic action sequences in movies but when the only reason you're including those in your film is for shock value it annoys me a bit. Django does have a couple of good things about it too though. I think when it really leans into the cartoony over the top aspect of the Wild West that's when it really shines for me. I think overall I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Unbroken. I don't like war movies that much to be honest so unless the movie does something really different and out there uh, you've generally lost me which unfortunately with a lot of the war movies that I have watched they do seem to be presented in a very similar way to each other. Don't get me wrong I did think there were some good parts about the film. I suppose if you're into sort of historical biopic films then this one might be for you. I'd probably give it like a, a 4 out of 10. American Psycho. American Psycho is actually really funny in places. Like there's this scene where all these Wall Street businessmen are showing each other their business cards and they've all just got a, a very slightly different font and a very slightly different shade of white. That was my favourite part in the film actually. At the same time though, it, it gets really messed up. I guess that's kind of the point. I just never really care when movies go over the top blood and gore. It doesn't necessarily put me off for the sort of expected reason of like I, I can't handle it or I'm too squeamish. It's just, again, some about forcing shock value kind of annoys me. Underneath all that though I do think it was quite a, a clever critique of American society. I'd probably give it like a 6 out of 10. Game Night. 
very much an American comedy. It did get a few laughs out of me and it, it's a very low effort watch. A little bit forgettable though, so it's a five out of 10. Kick ass. I really enjoy Kick-Ass. It's eccentric in a good way, but it's also kind of relatable and down to earth, especially in comparison to some of the superhero movies that it's parodying. Good film, 7.5 out of 10. Groundhog Day. What a film, what a film. Groundhog Day is just such a good concept. It's really charming, it's Bill Murray in his prime. It's a really easy and enjoyable watch, but at the same time, it's got some good messages about Humility and life. It's a 9 out of 10 for Groundhog Day. Grand Budapest Hotel. The mise-en-scene in this film, that's the costume and set design, is the best I think I've seen in any movie. It's got such a strong sense of style, uh, it's got great humour, and there's a lot of passion that has been put into this film. Another 9 out of 10. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Another great Wes Anderson film. It's a really clever direction to take uh, a story like Fantastic Mr. Fox with the exploration of themes such as success and failure and family. An 8 out of 10 from me. Isle of Dogs. My favourite Wes Anderson film and one of my favourite films full stop. The animation is beautiful, the characters are great, the story is so interesting and the pacing is amazing. It's perfect, it just has such a, a distinct rhythm to it. It's an epic film film. 10 out of 10 everyone, 10 out of 10. Kubo and the Two Strings. The narrative for this film isn't anything special, it's kind of predictable uh, as far as the story goes, but surrounding that is a, a whole array of unique characters and locations. The paper origami idea is genius, and overall it, it's just a film that will make you feel good. 8 out of 10. Wall E. 100% the best Pixar film. No arguments needed. It uses very little dialogue but there's so much emotion in it. Wally is adorable. Oh man, what a, what a film. 9.5 out of 10. The Wind Rises. There's so much character in this film from the love story to the dream sequences. The sound design is really cool as well. All of the engines of the planes in the film are just people going which is a really interesting choice, but I think it works. Obviously, the film is really pretty as well. I mean, it's Studio Ghibli, what do you expect? An 8 out of 10. Porco Rosso. I'm just going to whiz through the rest of the Studio Ghibli films because I share some similar thoughts on pretty much all of them. Basically, I think they're all beautiful and all charming. They're just some of the best films on, on the planet. I'd give Porco Rosso like a 7.5 out of 10. When Marnie Was There, I'd give this one like a 7 out of 10. From Up on Poppy Hill. This film is way better than people give it credit for honestly. I've seen a load of lists where people rank this as like one of the lowest Studio Ghibli films. I loved it. 8 out of 10. The Cat Returns. Very bizarre but in a good way. 7.5 out of 10. Howl's Moving Castle. Magical. 9 out of 10. Ponyo on the Cliff. Very much a film that's directed towards kids so maybe I should be embarrassed at the amount that I did enjoy it but I don't care. It's a great film. What can I say? 8 out of 10. Pom Poco so strange. It's really funny at the same time though. I think this is maybe my favourite Takahata film. 8.5 out of 10. Secret Life of Arietti. A really aesthetically pleasing reiteration of The Borrowers. 7 out of 10. My Neighbours the Yamadas. Such a great style of drawing. It's told in like an anthology of different stories where it explores the family dynamic in different ways. 7.5 out of 10. Princess Mononoke, a very grand and adventurous film. The score for this film is just unbelievably good. 8.5 out of 10. Kiki's Delivery Service, one of my favourite films ever. It's very, very wholesome. 10 out of 10 for me, honestly. Spirited Away, put it this way, there's a reason it's the most popular Studio Ghibli movie. And that's because on the whole, I think it's probably their best. Arguably one of the best films of all time. In terms of my taste, I'd rank it about equal with Kiki's Delivery Service, so... 10 out of 10. Oh my god, it's going really dark now. I'm gonna have to speed through the rest of these. The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. It's not quite up to the same standard as a Studio Ghibli, but it's still really good. I give it like a 6.5 out of 10. Mirai. A nice story about a family growing up. I think maybe if I was a parent, I'd be able to relate to this story a bit more. I did find the main child character to be a little bit obnoxious. Probably still give it like a 6 out of 10 though. A Silent Voice. I think this is a really good film. All of the characters feel very human, you know? They don't betray their personality personalities when they're when they're making decisions throughout the film and even when the characters get older and they change their personalities a bit it still feels like a really natural progression for each character an 8 out of 10 
children who chase lost voices. A really sad story with not quite enough wonder or excitement to carry it through and for a film set in a fantasy world it's kind of bleak and unimaginative. Probably only about a 5 out of 10 for me. 5 centimeters per second. Beautiful and really relaxing but very pretentious. This 100% isn't a film that will be for everyone. Barely anything happens in it. A 6 out of 10 from me. Weathering with you. I think it's very easy to make the mistake of comparing this too harshly against your name but if you just look at it as a standalone piece it's actually a really good film. A 7.5 out of 10. Your name. Mwah. What a classic. It looks gorgeous. The narrative is really clever. It's got the best kind of cringy romantic feel to it and there's a reason this film is held in such high esteem. 9.5 out of 10. Garden of Words. Like 5 centimeters per second not a lot actually happens in this film but to be honest I kind of liked it. A lot of the shots in this film would work really well as like the visuals for a lo-fi mixtape on YouTube. A 7.5 out of 10. There you go, that's it. It's getting really dark outside now. Sorry this was a bit of a shit post, but maybe some people will find something new to watch out of this. It's way too hot in the UK today. I am so bad with heat, honestly. So I'm gonna go and stand in front of a fan for the next 24 hours. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, have a nice week and goodbye. <laughs>